Depending on who you talk to, e-cigarettes are either an answer for millions trying to stop smoking or the dawn of a new era of nicotine addiction. They're either a big threat to big tobacco or they may save it. As special correspondent John Larson reports, for good or ill, e-cigarettes remain completely unregulated by the federal government. That's about to change. How long have you guys been vaping? When Craig Majors was thinking about opening the Liquid Vapor Lounge a few years back, the e-cigarette industry had not yet caught fire. You cashed out your 401k, took a loan out on your car, took all your savings. Went all in. All in, selling a selection of products for vaporizing liquid nicotine. There was only a handful of so-called vape shops in Oklahoma City at the time, but that changed almost overnight. Three years ago, 10 shops. Two years ago, 15. Now, 200. In less than five years, vapor products and e-cigarettes have become the fastest growing sector of the $100 billion American tobacco industry. With Hollywood pitch women, I'm Jenny McCarthy, and I finally found a smarter alternative to cigarettes. Appearing in local Super Bowl ads. Friends don't let friends smoke. And even in HBO's Jesus. Veep. Catherine, you are smoking? I'm vaping. In fact, an estimated 20 million Americans have taken up e-cigarettes and vaporizers, many motivated by the same thing. It helped me not want to go back to cigarettes. It worked. Three years, uh, no cigarettes. It looks like we may have a product that could deliver nicotine to the lungs without combustion. So for some currently addicted adult smokers, if they could completely switch to e-cigarettes, this could conceivably help. And it's that message that the FDA and Big Tobacco agree on, that e-cigs may be a safer alternative for cigarette smokers. We know what smokers want. And why Robert Dunham of Reynolds American calls e-cigs the industry's holy grail. So if you can uh, deliver uh, satisfaction to adult tobacco consumers in a way that poses far less risk, uh -oh. let's go. I mean, this has got to be the, the billion dollar idea, right? But despite the industry's runaway success, there has been little research and no federal regulation. Two years ago, researchers at the University of California, Riverside, discovered some vaporizing systems exposed users to heavy metals. Another study revealed vaporizing liquids at high temperatures, while uncommon, could expose users to high levels of formaldehyde, a known carcinogen. If you think that you're picking these up because they're glamorous and that you're not going to have any downstream or long-term effects as a result of this, I think you're kidding yourself. Dr. Thomas Susson at Johns Hopkins University found in a recent study of mice that while healthy lung tissue looked like this, the lungs of mice exposed to e-cig vapors looked like this, showing evidence they were less capable of fighting infection. He also discovered free radicals, the same dangerous chemicals found in tobacco smoke. It was not to the level that what we see in, in conventional cigarettes, but the number of free radicals that we detected was 7 times 10 to the 11th, which is a huge number. So it's very likely that those free radicals are going to inflict some level of damage in the lungs. The FDA has failed to recognize the impact of the advertising of this product towards young people. Matt Myers of the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids says according to the Centers for Disease Control, e-cigarette use has tripled in middle and high school students in just one year. An estimated two million kids exposed to nicotine. It's the way to be cool, it's the way to be sexy, it's the way to be independent, it's the way to be rebellious, and it's the way to be just like everybody else. And it's no surprise. It is appealing to millions of kids. Nicotine has been proven addictive and harmful to teenagers, threatening normal brain development. You know, I imagine a parent of a teenager saying, what's it going to take to shut down this marketing? Well, we share the concern. Um, E-cigarettes should not be used by kids. And we were on the record last year saying to get the proposed rule out took us longer than it should have. Longer because the courts overruled the FDA's first effort. The FDA is now trying again, proposing new regulations, which surprisingly do not address targeting teenagers with sweet flavors or advertising. I understand the frustration that it's taking FDA so long. There needs to be a little patience. We need answers to the questions that have been fielded in the many studies that we have put out there to have the full regulatory framework in place 
for e-cigarettes. Have you ever had um, uh, Suicide Bunny's mother's milk? Visit any vape shop and you'll find hundreds of flavors called e-liquids or e-juice. Some do appear to target the young with sweet flavors like strawberry shortcake or Captain Crunch or gummy bears. The industry is not targeting children. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean that you don't like uh, gummy bears. A former rodeo rider and recovering addict, Sean Gore is an advocate for Oklahoma's vaping industry. You know, I, I see adults buying you know, packs of gummy bears all the time. I mean, just because you're an adult doesn't mean that you don't like good flavors. And it's the growing abundance of flavors, variable nicotine strengths, and customizable equipment that Gore says is so popular. Vape shops offer what's called open systems, so customers can pour e-liquids into open vaporizers. Big Tobacco, on the other hand, offers what's called closed systems. The nicotine liquid is already enclosed within the e-cig, which turns out to be a huge point. Because even as the FDA is writing its proposed regulations, Big Tobacco is lobbying to outlaw the increasingly successful open systems offered by its competitors. We do have, and we've heard, legitimate concerns from, from others about uh, the, uh, uh, the dangers of exposed nicotine. And that's one that we believe uh, ought to be addressed. Liquid nicotine is highly toxic. Too much can be lethal. Many of the new vapor entrepreneurs are small business. The owners of the Vapor Hut in Oklahoma City, for example, used to sell snow cones out of this truck. They now have six vape shops and a multi-million dollar online business selling 140 flavors, which even in the absence of regulation, they are mixing in what they describe as clean rooms. And they are just one of thousands of new small businesses now competing with big tobacco. It feels like a million small businesses are crawling in over the walls into a business that you guys traditionally have relatively owned. I mean, are they a threat? Or should I say, how much of a threat are they to you? If we get our act together, th these guys are going to be our, our, uh, our future customers. Um, there's no reason that those things don't want to, uh, to come together. And we're just going to hand the industry straight back to them while driving small business owners out? It makes no sense. Gore fears the pending federal regulations may force every small flavor manufacturer to spend tens of thousands of dollars proving the safety of every flavor at every strength. If that happens, you'll end up seeing probably five flavors and really the only individuals that will be able to afford the testing and getting, getting the approval for those flavors would be big tobacco. The notion that people who have no chemical training, no safety training, are mixing concoctions in the back room or their bathtub and giving it to consumer means we're doing a human guinea pig experiment on literally millions of Americans without any knowledge of what the consequences are. If you're too small a manufacturer in order to be able to assure the public about what's in your product, then you shouldn't be selling it to the public. Which brings us back to the public and these folks back in Oklahoma who volunteered for some closing portraits, all told us vaping saved them from cigarettes. The government promises it will try to balance this with the still unknown risks of e-cigs. Big Tobacco hopes regulators will keep the health benefits in mind. Small business fears that Big Tobacco may be trying to put them out of business. And as for the vapors themselves, they do love the abundance of flavors but want to know, what's really in this stuff? And how safe is it? For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Larson in Oklahoma City.